Emperor Diocletian, fully known as Gaius Aurelius Valerius Diocletianus, was born Diocles around CE 244 to an Illyrian family of low status in the remote but important province of Dalmatia, now Croatia. At the time, the Roman Empire was embroiled in the crisis of the 3rd century. Internal and external threats had destabilized the empire, and a rapid succession of emperors and usurpers claimed the throne. The empire fractured into at least three parts. During the time of Emperor Carus, a young Diocletian rose through the ranks of the Roman military to become a cavalry commander. After the death of Carus in Persia, Diocletian was proclaimed emperor. However, Carus's son, Carinus, also claimed the throne, but Diocletian defeated him in battle. Diocletian's ascension to emperor marked the end of the crisis, and he instituted a new period of stability called the Tetrarchy, administering the empire in four districts and solving one major problem that the empire was just too large for one single ruler to properly control. Incidentally, this structure is where the Catholic term of diocese comes from. The Tetrarchy continued tenuously beyond Diocletian's death until Constantine the Great became the sole emperor once again and reorganized it into just eastern and western halves. Near the end of his life, Diocletian became the first emperor to abdicate voluntarily, retiring to a lavish villa in his home province of Dalmatia, modern Croatia. The palace took at least 10 years to build, and Diocletian only got to enjoy it about 7 years before his death in 312. It continued to be used by imperial families until at least the year 480. The province of Dalmatia, including the palace and the provincial capital Salona, modern-day Solon and birthplace of Diocletian, was conquered by the Ostrogoths in the year 480 and ruled by them until the Byzantine Emperor Justinian I retook it in 535. At the end of their reign, the Ostrogoths destroyed the aqueduct that fed the palace, which helped send it into disuse. In the 7th century, Slavs and Avar horse nomads had moved into Dalmatia and sacked Salona. Some of the refugees from the city took shelter inside the abandoned palace, beginning its second life. Since then, the palace has been continuously occupied, with residents gradually building out homes and businesses within the palace structure and even within the walls themselves. One of the first significant changes to the structure of the palace was in the northern or golden gate. There are four principal gates into the palace, with the northern sections housing soldiers and servants, the central southern quarter used for more public activities, and the southernmost quarter reserved for the imperial residence. The north gate was originally the main gate from which the emperor entered the complex. Today, the center section of the north gate is mostly intact, though stripped of its decorative columns and all previous adornment. By the time of the sacking of Salona, the empire was officially Christian, so the refugees needed a place to worship. The Church of St. Martin was built for that purpose in the former century's walkways above the North Gate. The spaces above the East and West Gates also had small churches at one time. Today, the West Gate is mostly covered up by later building construction but still recognizable. The East Gate is a lot more visible and connects to the huge split outdoor market where you can buy seemingly anything from souvenirs to clothes to food of all kinds. The final and smallest gate, the South Gate, is part of the South Face that was originally right up against the sea. Today it still faces the sea but major land reclamation work has been done to transform the area into the modern, tourist-friendly Riva. The Tetrarchy system of government isn't all that Diocletian was known for. By the year 300, when Diocletian was emperor, Christianity had significant footholds throughout the empire. 
Diocletian saw this as a growing threat to traditional Roman beliefs and values and eventually outlawed the practice, beginning the final and greatest persecution of Christians in Roman history. Diocletian's successor, Constantine the Great, ended the persecution and in 313 issued the Edict of Milan, decriminalizing Christian worship and declaring himself a Christian, beginning the Christianization of the empire. The mausoleum of Diocletian where he was laid to rest just a year before the Edict of Milan in the year 312, was consecrated as the Cathedral of St. Dominus in the 7th century. St. Dominus, a Christian missionary in Salona in the late 3rd century, and now the patron saint of Split, was martyred during Diocletian's great persecution. It was a great act of revenge against Diocletian to remove the emperor's remains, some say dumped unceremoniously into the sea, and replace them with the relics of a man he had killed. The bell tower of the cathedral was added much later in the 12th century. The palace's Temple of Jupiter, dedicated to the greatest of all the Roman gods, was also converted in the 7th century into a baptistry dedicated to St. John the Baptist. The modern statue of St. John was made by famous Croatian sculptor Ivan Mestrovic in the early 20th century. As another act of revenge on Diocletian, one of his prized Egyptian sphinxes which sits outside the temple was decapitated. Of the 11 sphinxes documented that Diocletian had moved from Egypt, possibly related to Pharaoh Thutmose III who lived 1800 years before Diocletian, only two others survived, one in the Split City Museum and one in the Peristyle. The peristyle was the central public area of the palace, situated between the Temple of Jupiter and the mausoleum and connecting to the emperor's private residence. The elevated end in front of the residence was where Diocletian would occasionally address his subjects. Surrounded by Egyptian columns the same age as the sphinxes, it survives today largely intact and is a primary meeting and gathering place for tourists. Beyond the peristyle, the vestibule is the first room of the residence, where Diocletian would meet with and entertain select and honored guests. The vestibule is the most intact of all the original rooms, though the inner wall and lavish decorations are long gone. Other parts of the residence were converted into the Split Ethnographic Museum, which makes use of some rooms to showcase post-Roman Dalmatian culture. A ticket also gives you access to the roof of the vestibule and a great view of the city. The triclinium, another part of the residence, was the dining hall. Here and in surrounding rooms where the walls and ceiling are gone, you can see some of the multiple layers of the city that have been added on over the centuries. You can also see some of the original towel work that is undergoing preservation as well as openings down to the substructure of the palace. Built to level out the main floors against the undulating base terrain, the substructure was also used for storage. Most of it was used as a trash dump in medieval and later times, though some sections did survive pretty much intact. Before we go, we need to thank two businesses in Split who helped inspire this video. The first is Diocletian's Dream, a virtual reality simulated tour of the palace during Diocletian's time. They are located just north-northeast of the Golden Gate. The second is Split Walking Tour, 
who gave us detailed information on the history and current state of the palace while touring the actual locations. You can find them anytime in the Peristyle. Links to both companies are in the YouTube About text. We hope that you enjoyed our video. If you did and want to see more from us, please help us out with the YouTube algorithm and hit like on the video, subscribe on our channel, and feel free to share. Follow.